What is up guys? Finally got another video going. Uh, in this video we will be talking about Project Mouse. Uh, we'll be making a, a mouse lure for, um, or a rat lure, whatever you want, uh, for bass. Uh, as you can see here, this will be the final result. But uh, obviously we'll show you the uh, process of um, how we work towards it. So yeah, let's get going. Now, the wood that I'm using is actually scrap wood. I had two pieces left. Uh, one of the pieces, I have no idea what type of wood it is. That's the darker wood. Uh, the lighter stuff, I believe, is poplar, but I'm not 100% sure. So, there were just two pieces lying around. I really didn't have any other wood to use. And, uh, yeah, I figured I might as well see if I can't turn that into a uh, fishing lure. Now... I was kind of limited by the size of the one piece, um, so here I'm kind of drawing out uh, the maximum, uh, I guess, surface that I can use on that little dark piece. So here I'm just seeing where the lines overlap, and where they're visible and not visible, that way I can kind of figure out the, the maximum size of the lure. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be sawing out two of the same size of the wood, uh, since uh, the lighter colored wood is bigger, I will just be um, determining the size of the smaller one and then sticking the paper onto the lighter one and then eventually cut that out with the bandsaw. So you've done that, um, I just want to make sure that I cut it straight so I use the outline of the wood to cut the piece of paper out. But you can use scissors as well, this may be a little bit more accurate. I guess you could even fold the paper in half. So that you've got a, a symmetrical but uh, outline, but uh, this worked perfectly fine as well. So here we transfer the outlining onto the wood. As you can see, the shape perfectly fits the uh, the wood on the side there. So it's always good to take some time and um, see how the fitting of the lure design fits the the wood that you got left. If you're just using scrap wood. And as you can see here, we transfer it on, on the lighter wood. Now, just to, just to rephrase it, we are not using two different types of wood for any purpose other than that's all the wood we have left. Um, I kind of had to work around a couple of things. Obviously, it'd be way more convenient if we just have one piece that's high enough to carve a mouse out of. Uh, but this is all we had left, so there you go. Here we're just using the bandsaw to cut out the shapes, as you can see. That works perfectly fine, that's number one. You just have to cut off the tail there. Easy enough. And then we just uh, saw the pop of wood in shape as well. Done deal. Cool, so we got two equal pieces. Want to make sure the tails are the same as well. Now one thing I didn't know was the density of the wood and here's what the result was. Uh, the darker wood was 21 grams. Um, I waited a couple of times, one time it hit 20. Uh, the poplar wood was 20 or 21. So I'm tempted to say both of them are about 20.5 grams or smack bang between 20 to 21 grams so they're pretty much exactly the same weight they've got the same density so uh, that made it easy uh, that made an easy decision obviously if there was one wood heavier than the other I would use it as the bottom piece uh, now one other thing to take into consideration was the grain of the wood uh, the poplar is much easier to carve so uh, that was going to go on top since we had to carve the ears as well um, either way, here we just super glue in the, the two halves together. Um, Loctite is uh, my favorite super glue. One for the tube that it comes in is readily available. It's not super expensive. And uh, it, you know, as the name suggests, it locks everything up very, very well. Cool. 
Cool. So we'll be using the darker part as the bottom and the lighter part as the top. Just for carving purposes, that's all. Now, here we do freehand the um, the indications for where the uh, weight holes are going to go. Um, it's good if you can measure it out, but uh, you can check by eye if you've done a good job uh, in terms of uh, getting the uh, weight hole smack bang in the center of the lure. Uh, once we've done that, I kind of drew a quick design of the what we want the lure to look like eventually, including the ears. Now, one thing um, I'll have to mention is we are going to use a swimming lip and we want that cut to be made straight obviously otherwise the swimming lip won't sit straight and one thing you shouldn't forget is if you uh, have cut out your um, the outline with a bandsaw uh, please do keep your um, cut out from the other side on hand so you can super glue that back in I'm not saying like full on super glue just a couple of dots so that you can use it to uh, level the lure while you make the cut for the um, swimming lip uh, same goes for or any other lure that uh, you'll be making uh, with a bandsaw uh, that has a uh, swimming lip, crankbaits, uh, certain swim baits, you name it. So here you can see me put the parts back together. I actually um, checked if the if that leveled the lure out, so that we can actually have a a cut for the um, diving lip, and that's what we've done here. So here we're going to have to start up the um, center drill points for the weight holes. Obviously uh, we'll use a, uh, a bigger drill a bit later on but it's always great to start off with a small drill because it's easy to make an adjustment if you're not uh, dead center. Uh, and just in case you don't have a bigger drill but you can actually use a smaller one to, to grind out the sides instead. That'll work perfectly fine. I have to get new drill bits. As you can see, the smoke comes up here. So that thing's been heated up too much. Cool. So those the weight holes done. We wanted to do that first so that we uh, had a le uh, level surface to work again once again. Now we can actually start carving. Now I didn't show you the uh, drilling of the bigger hole simply because it was freaking cold outside and I just wanted to get it over and done with as quick as possible. So Either way. Carving is pretty straightforward. Whatever design you choose, uh, stick to that. But keep one thing in mind, uh, symmetry is key. Always make sure that your um, lure is going to be symmetrical in um, every way. Uh, you can never pay enough uh, uh, too much attention to making your lure symmetrical. So, um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Now here we start the outline of the uh, ears. Now, in the end result, the ears actually look quite detailed, but they're pretty straightforward to carve. Uh, I just leave a bump on the head as the outline, and then later on I'll just cut the excess wood between the ears away and we kind of shape the hat from that uh, from there onwards I leave a little bit of extra um, footage in this video so I can explain things better just in case anyone has got questions uh, I can actually refer them to the exact point in the video might make the video a bit longer but that's okay Video is for educational purposes and a little bit of entertainment, I guess, as well. But uh, yeah, educational purposes number one. So can't have enough uh, footage. So here you see me carve between the ears. Um, I thought this was going to be a real tough gig, but it was actually much easier than I thought. The only thing is, poplar wood is pretty um, pretty dense, so that makes it pretty rough on your on your carving tools you'll blunt them very quick especially if you're not cutting with the grain as I am doing here it uh, makes it quite tough but a knife sharpener always helps or if you have spare blades for your box cutter 
obviously that will work. Cool. Now here we grind out the um, ear sockets. Uh, I'm just using the same Dremel drill bit for this. Uh, I just made a drill hole on a slight angle and just kind of moved the drill around to grind out the uh, grind out the axis. Uh, that worked perfectly fine. Actually, it looked a lot better than I expected it to. Uh, obviously, afterwards we'll be sanding it as well. Uh, but this is a good way to start. I'm glad I used the poplar wood for the top because it would have been impossible to carve out the ears in as much detail as we did with the uh, the wood that we used for the bottom part of the lure. So. It all works out. Here I ground out some um, extra lines, some extra wood that was hard to get with the uh, box cutter. And that's pretty much all done. We also want to drill a hole in the back of the, the lure. We'll later on have uh, a spring in there in which we can uh, screw on the, the tail. And we want that tail to slightly disappear in there so there's like a flush transition. But we'll get to that later. Here we're just doing the sanding. Uh, start off with 60. That one works fine for some rough sanding for poplar wood. Uh, and whatever wood is on the bottom apparently. And then we'll later do a, uh, a 300 grit sand just to smooth it all out, get rid of the uh, scr extra scratches from um, the, the rough sandpaper. Cool, there we have it. Now obviously you have to put weights in the, in the bottom. Now we had a bit of a fire going in the uh, chimney that we have. Now I wouldn't recommend this generally. Um, but I heated up some lead in a little um, ceramic, oh, I guess what you call it, it's kind of like a little ceramic spoon and I was able to pour it in there so that was easy enough. Uh, oh I might actually do the weighting later. Either way, here's the design for the swimming lip. Now what we use for the sw uh, swimming lip is a little bit different than what we usually use. I'm actually using a uh, compartment separator from a tackle box. I'm sure that everyone uh, that uh, has lures knows about them. Um, there's usually uh, way too many to use in any tackle box that you buy. Um, so we were lucky enough to, to have a couple extra and uh, be able to design a lip out of that. Now it's not the first time that I've done it. I actually like using this material. It's easy to cut. Uh, it's quite durable because it, it's uh, pliable, it's flexible. Uh, but it holds its um, it holds up pretty good in terms of strength. So uh, yeah, didn't have to think twice when I found that I had some excess um, compartment separators. Now, funny thing, I'll show you here with a couple of pictures. I caught a big old northern pike in the Netherlands on a swim bait that wasn't even close to being ready. Uh, I was testing if the swim bait swam without a diving lip, which it didn't. But I had already made the slit for a diving lip in the bait. And here you can see what the lure looked like. It wasn't even finished carving. But I called a, called a 92 centimeter pike. It was about 3 foot pike. On uh, a lure that wasn't even close to being finished. With a compartment separator as a lip. Anyway, that aside. Uh, we're uh, actually uh, screwing the screw eye through the uh, plastic lip. That actually works quite well. So the lip will be held in with the screw, screw eye, and uh, but we'll we'll also super glue it. So won't be a problem. Now the oh, this is where we actually put the weighting in. Wow. Um, either way, the screw eye is already um, 
located in the nose and as you can see you can actually see it in the weight hole there and here's actually where we uh, poured in the molten lead I couldn't really show you because I didn't have any hands free to record any video on me melting the lead uh, this worked quite well I should probably invest in one of those Lee lead melters because um, that makes it a lot easier just to pour lead into those holes but this worked okay for the one time wouldn't recommend it though uh, here we just fill up the gaps with uh, super glue and sawdust as we always do that works really well I'm sure you've seen it in uh, plenty of uh, other m of my other videos Perfect. So here we make sure that the um, hole that we use for the tail is a little bit deeper. Uh, this way we can accommodate the spring that we'll be using as a uh, lure coil. But you'll see what I mean in a bit. I'd recommend to go outside to do this. As you can see there's plenty of smoke coming off and it doesn't smell very good. Good thing I had the door open, but yeah, should probably go outside for that type of stuff. Now what we'll do is we'll super glue this spring in and we'll use some sawdust that we just drilled out uh, to um, fix it in. I'll show you that in a bit. So here we just uh, sand the uh, outside of where I drilled the hole for the uh, tail. Now the tail that we um, are going to make is actually just uh, straight up uh, slightly uh, cut up uh, trick worm by zoom they're pretty cheap I had a couple of them left uh, this one fitted perfectly so going with that obviously I have to trim it a little bit because it might be too long we don't want the the, the tail to drag the lure too much because it might reduce the action but you can just uh, cut it shorter and shorter um, as you go either way um, the spring that we actually use you can make them yourself uh, but I actually got this pen when I was at the Della Safari Club convention um, guys from Blaukran Safaris in South Africa very helpful um, either way I'm using this pen that I got from them to uh, turn it into a lure coil um, making it a little bit longer to make sure it fits super easy everyone should have these at home if you don't have the right wire to um, make a, a soft plastic coil or spring whatever you call them you can just grab a pen that you don't want anymore or where the ink is run out as you can see it's a perfect size for fitting the, the worm tail on there cool so here we uh, I've placed it inside the rear of the the rat or the mouse and here we're just fixing it in very very simple there's nothing Loctite won't fix I guess you can use epoxy as well if you've got a fast setting um, two-tone epoxy that'll be very very good to use as well I just prefer Loctite because it's nice and runny it, uh, it's really thin and epoxy obviously is quite thick um, so this actually helps um, it's spread out throughout the gap and fix in the spring Here we're just putting some sawdust on uh, on the spring and in the uh, gap to, to fix it in properly
Now the cool thing about this is obviously if a tail breaks off or you want to change it over to a different color or style, uh, you can just change the tail without a problem. Last bits of super glue. And it's good to go. Perfect. Alright, so now it's time uh, to fit the, um, the bill in, the diving lip. So obviously we wanted to fix the bill in first with uh, super glue. Uh, then we tighten up the screw eye. That's all good to go. And here we've already put it in the base coat. The kind of jumped ahead here. Um, we put some tape around the um, diving lip to keep the, the paint away from it. And after we've done the base coat and sanded it, uh, we sprayed it with um, metallic silver. Uh, and here we're just indicating where the eyes are going to be, give it a bit of a dark outline. Going to keep this thing super simple. It's been a pretty simple build anyway, apart from the uh, the ears. This is a real easy lure to make. It's almost, it's pretty much the same as your uh, regular crankbait, with some additional stuff on top of it. Then we uh, covered it in glitter, just red glitter, half laying around, and yeah, that looks pretty decent, so uh, once that's all done, uh, we can take the tape off the bell, let's just see me do here, and once that's done, we can stick the eyes on. I will say, I had to kind of look for the uh, uh, which eyes I want to put on. I didn't quite have the right size, but I did find some um, uh, topwater lures. I think it was a uh, Jackal Mudsucker. It's a topwater lure by Jackal. Uh, that had been in a tackle box for too long and it heated up too much and the whole thing expanded. So it's completely unusable now. Uh, so I took the eyes off that. That worked perfectly fine. Now I noticed with these type of lures uh, that I like placing the eyes close to the nose. It gives them a bit more character than when you place them far away. Obviously you could use bigger size eyes and move them a bit further but I generally like uh, having them close to the connection point. Man, it's been a long video for quite a simple lure, but I guess um, being able to explain a bit extra always helps. Now, since we're always working with super glue, make sure you take your time on uh, putting those eyes on properly. You don't want to move it around too much because that's going to stain your paint job. Uh, on top of that, that super glue is pretty well, pretty much instant. So once you put that eye on there, you better have it in the right uh, position. Cool, that looks good. As you can see, I've already placed the screw eyes uh, on the bottom where the hook connections will be. That's for the purpose of the epoxy. It's on the uh, lure dryer here. It'd be a bit of a pain to uh, create the um, screw eye gaps once the epoxy is set. So you're better off doing that beforehand. That all worked out well. Now on the topic of sentences that very little people have ever said. Uh, here I am actually screwing the worm up the arse of the rat. Um... Yeah, that's just the way it goes. That's how we connect the tail. Uh, we've taken the screw eyes out. 
where we connect the hooks so that we can put some washes on there. Uh, we've got a very thick coat of epoxy. Uh, there is a reasonable concern for actually causing a leak in the lure with uh, some uh, cup washes because I've got a sharp edge and if you've got a thin layer of epoxy you actually damage your epoxy layer once you tighten your screw eyes and obviously they can cause your lure to uh, soak up water and that's never good but uh, we've got a very very thick layer and I'm fairly confident that that won't happen here at all. Second one in. Now you see that they're both on an angle. Uh, that kind of helps with uh, the, stre the strength uh, within the lure. Also, it allows us to use uh, to use longer uh, screw eyes. Obviously, if we had to put them in straight, they might come through the top. That's something we don't want. So it's two birds, one stone type of deal. So pay close attention to when you are using cup washes, how tight you're actually tightening the, uh, the screw eyes. Check those um, cup washes every turn or every half turn to make sure that they're not tightening up too much because that's when they'll start digging into your epoxy and your paint coat and that's never good for uh, your lure. So Anyway, that's that one done. Now all we need is some hooks and it's ready for testing. Now, as you can see, it has a wicked good action. It swims really, really well. And you might not be actually able to hear it on the audio. Well, I know it because I'll have this uh, narration <laughs> over the top of it. Uh, but the tail actually slaps on the water and makes a noise as well. So that's really cool. Here you see the underwater footage. Now, you'll notice that the lure is a little bit off to one side. Uh, I actually fixed that. After I saw this video, I didn't couldn't see it from the from the top, but once I watched this footage, I realized that the lure was off to the right a little bit, as you can see. Uh, all it took was the adjustment of the the nose, and uh, that actually helped it swim straight right now. So, perfectly simple. Also, something that you can try if you run into this problem, you can actually adjust the bill. Uh, especially if you also made it out of uh, a compartment separator from a tackle box. That stuff is super easy to trim. You can just use a regular pair of scissors. Um, I hope you, you, know, you won't be using those scissors for anything important because that, it will blunt it a fair bit. But um, that stuff is fairly easy to use. Uh, you, you can very slightly trim the sides of your diving lip as well. But if you're... Um, nose connection is off then that's going to be the main reason why a lure won't swim through. I cannot wait to use this lure on um, the pre-spawn bass in March. That's usually when they're very violent. I always do best with top waters here in Texas around that time because it's still somewhat cool in the morning but it's nice and warm during the day. Very, very nice weather for uh, bass fishing. So if I fish this lure quite slow, it actually dives down a fair bit deeper. Here you see the nice wiggle. That's perfect. That tail <laughs> really comes into its own. Very, very happy with this result. For such a simple build, it was a really nice result. It weighs just over an ounce and a half, so perfect for light bait casters. Yeah, just all around perfect bass lure. It actually dives down to, I'd say two feet, if I really want to, if I really put that tip down. So that's a, that's a good thing. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching, guys. For those of you who are interested in the, the shirts that we'll be making, the design is almost done. Uh, once it's done, uh, it will be sent off to the factory. And uh, I'll have to just get a notification from when it will be sent to me. Uh, obviously, it goes through Japan as well. So 
Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.